That's why I just wanted to enjoy it because what was the joy in doing something and knocking your head against the wall and not winning at the end of it all? Because all I value was winning and losing. I did wasn't valuing the relationships yeah. and the journey of it. You two guys who've come through pretty remarkable careers and had had experienced the big drop. You know, you've been unplugged. If you guys now see 29, 30-year-old guys just gotten out who's not doing what you're doing, and you, you know, obviously see someone that's just gotten out, what are your thoughts, Jeremy, on making that transition? I mean, make it through the shock. Yeah. That's, hold on. I mean, you'll get, I mean, it, that part goes away, and then after that. I think it's frustration because you don't know how to channel that energy. You don't, you don't know what you're good at because the only thing you really felt good at is gone. So you got to find you, right? You gotta, yeah, you got to figure that out. But I think that's what most guys feel, that what else can I do? But hopefully now guys will start to understand people are smart and people are talented in more than one way. And you can find happiness you know, in your personal life, just as much you can find in your business life, and so many different ways to be happy. And I found that some strange way in my own roundabout way. I think one of the things that you're both describing is that the joy is what caused you to be so good at what you were doing. And if we could get coaches that are watching this, parents that are watching this, to see that, you know, it's not about like once you get to some place, then you're going to be happier, but if we can instill this idea that. If we can create greater levels of happiness now in the present, if they can find that joy now, they're going to be closer to their potential. We talk about the the fundamental tenets that you might say to a whether it's a thirty year old retiring NFL player, a thirty year old SEAL that just got out, or you know someone that's going through a divorce or the you know death of a loved one, anything. I think happiness is not something that just happens to you. I think it's something we actually have to work for. Otherwise, you're just your genes and your environment. Happiness is a harder choice for some people than it is for other people. But what I love about this research is what we're finding is you can actually deviate both from your genes and your environment to create a different life. And, and you've even experienced that. that. That sense of, I was unhappy at one point, but now I'm happier. It's not just your genes. We found simple things. Like, just like we train you know, a soldier to look for potential threats within a situation very quickly, we can train the opposite. We can do a four-year-old where you have them... Uh, think of three things that they're grateful for that are new that happened over the past 24 hours. Seems simple, but what their brain is actually training, it's training to scan their environment for the things that actually cause them to feel more grateful. And we find is we can move somebody from a low-level pessimist to a low-level optimist within a period of 21 days. Six months later, we can get them to low to moderate-level optimist that their default changes. And we can do that you know, on a sports team, you can do that with an 84-year-old man, right? Um, but you can do other things. We know exercise matters. We know two minutes of meditation, just taking your hands off of your keyboards or your phones and, you know, just washing your breath going out seems simple. Raise their accuracy raised by 10%. So how, how does somebody do that? How do people that are sitting here watching, how do you do two minutes of meditation? How do you even begin to do that? I make it really simple. I'd say go from multitasking for a minute to just trying to do one thing at a time. So for me, it's just washing my breath going and out. For two minutes. That's about all I can do. And help you learn to just take a deep breath. Yeah. Is that something you guys train, learn, talk about when you're in the team? I've been doing that my whole life. Martial arts from the very beginning and everything. Yeah, I mean, you see, there's multiple phrases for it, taking a wrap off, you know, step, step off the uh, offline kind of deal. And just collect yourself. Collect yourself. And, and he, I, I agree 100% with what he was saying. I mean, if... if I wasn't born a natural athlete. I wasn't big. I wasn't yeah. the smartest, fastest. I mean, I, I saw something that I wanted, and I was willing to do what it took to get it. Mm-hmm. And if you're, I mean, you, if, you're, if you're born, you pick yourself up and take a breath, and I'm conscious time you can do anything you want. Mm-hmm. I don't care, man, woman, what color you are, that doesn't mean anything. It's all, nobody has any idea what's in here. You can't stop that fire, or you're going to kill me. To stop me, kind of, you know. That's the mentality we have, and that's why we... I mean, I just won't accept, I won't accept that. Um, so, so. But you're always not, I always find whether or not the biggest, strongest, fastest is the one who wants it. Yeah. Who wants it more? Do you still feel that, in, obviously in a different way, you're not allowed to go around sacking people and, and you can't shoot people anymore, but is that competitive fire still there? Is it still, is it, it has to be in certain ways, sure. but for the most part, I don't go through every day looking and going, oh man, I gotta get that guy, or oh, I gotta be number one at this. If something's right. getting you up in the morning. I think what it taught us is how far we could push ourselves before we broke. And I, most people don't know how what the human body is capable of and the mind. 
and we keep kids from failing so much they never learn that, right? Like what you guys. Oh, my kids don't know that the problem. Well, that's good, right? Because <laughs> we've got these helicopter parents who, you know, make sure the kid's not going to fail. Like they're going to do their paper for them just so they don't fail. They'll finish the semester project. So they never ever learn what they're like. We get kids at Harvard who break that first year. You know, they have all these great grades and they just shout it the first time they get a, a C or a B or have forbid an F on a on a test because they never learn how to overcome a challenge. a challenge in the past. And I think that's that's one of the things we could be teaching people earlier on is that like the the, the failure isn't isn't bad at all. That's what actually teaches you where those limits are, you know, when you overcome oh, yeah, them. Yeah, I mean absolutely. Uh, you don't have any idea how good you can be until you've been beat mm-hmm. when, when you pick yourself up from that. I remember the thing that I'm proudest of were when you're on the field, you know the game's over. Your team's getting their butt flipped. The other team is going to run the ball down your throat because he's running the clock out. And the coach is like, come on, Michael, come out the game. You don't need to get hurt. And I said, absolutely not. I helped them get in this hole. I'm going to get out to the end because if I come off of these guys, they're not going to respect me. Mm-hmm. There's no stars. There's none of that it's a fo- you're a football player at that moment you're not better than your team you're part of that community part of the community. Part of that community and isn't that the, the final thing that you talk about is community right that exactly what you're talking about I, it's my favorite subject and you both talk about it like it's the thing that you miss most right it's uh, that community bond that you can feel um, the question is how you replicate it and you can't right you can't replicate what you guys have experienced but what we should do is we we got to teach kids we got to teach ourselves we got to teach society how to create some social bonds better right but my question is how do you talk about how do you talk about something like happiness at boot camp or in buds how do you well, that's not there's a time and place for that I and mean, you, you picked up that doesn't belong there yeah that's not why you're there so where where does it belong where, where should they be teaching? And not just in this, also, where do you teach happiness in sports? Like, how do you teach people early on? It's not about the win. It's about what you were describing earlier. Yeah, maybe enjoying the journey, enjoying every day, enjoying the practice. I think if, what I realized when I enjoyed the journey, and I, enjoyed, I focus more on practice. Every drill was important. Every step I took, where my hands were placed, I took pride in trying to be what I needed, the, the best that I could be. And I think if you can teach happiness and enjoyment of every step, it leads to that. And at the end of the day, if you have enough guys to believe in that, you will be successful. You will. Win. I do agree. With that. I think if you define happiness right, happiness becomes the greatest competitive advantage on a team. It becomes that joy that causes you to actually hit that potential. But it's got to not be happiness. It's just like a smile on your face or pleasure. Because I used to think I had to be angry to play every game when I was young. Yeah. He talked about my mama. I don't do no don't do this. I had to get, get it in my head. I tried to get angry. But yeah. after I got older, I didn't have to. I, I could talk to me, have this discussion on the sideline. I'd be sitting on the bench. We'll have a discussion. I'd say defense. I'd say, I'm going to argue about that. What's the point? I'm going to argue about that. Go do what I got to do. Come back, sit down, and pick up the conversation where we left off. Time to go to work on really. Yeah. Right that to me starts getting into the realm of becoming a master and really understanding an experience like football or like combat and you're no longer the young rookie that's full of misguided ideas so we're lucky we, we not only made it pretty crib we're, we're 14 afterwards too yeah. uh, but I mean, you don't have to be a, 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 a Navy SEAL we were, he wasn't born a professional athlete I wasn't born a Navy SEAL yeah. if you're watching this and you, you think that just like oh I can't man I and retiring at 30, I, we had a guy on the bus class, 32. Hmm. I had one of my officers, he's, he's not with us anymore, but he, he was just, hey, I, I said something to him about going to medical school after I got out of the military. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not too old. He goes, then you think you're too old to do anything? Start digging a hole. You think, you know, God let you know when you're too old, because you're done, kind of deal. Never too old to do anything, man. Just start it. And keep going. And if it, if it ain't meant to be, it's not to be. Say it again. Thank you, guys. Michael, thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Marcus. Um, Sean, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. Stay at play from Los Angeles tonight. Good night.